Today I'm sharing my 13 streams of income that got me to over six figures in revenue. My name is Kath from kathkyle.com and I help people to improve their mindset so they can improve the success of their business. And if this sounds like something that's right up your street, I would love it if you would subscribe. So let's get going. So 13 income streams for bloggers that got me to six figures. These income streams took my blog to six figures and most of them are absolutely passive. We are totally spoiled for choice when it comes to income streams online. And in fact, too much choice can actually stop you from taking any action at all. So what I'm gonna to do today is break down my personal income streams to show you what has actually worked for me. And I'm also gonna put my income streams in order of when I first created them, so you can get a good order to implement these income sources. And I'm going to discuss the, the pros and cons of each income source. So the first income source is offering a service. So this is the very first thing I did to get started with my online income streams. I learned how to set up websites. I set up my own website and then I was asked to set up a website for a friend of a friend. So the pros, now, it didn't actually take me very long to set up a website and I got paid a good amount of money for my time. Providing a service to someone starts off by making you a lot of money so that you can earn passively when you first start your business. So it's worthwhile to do both active and passive income sources when you are getting started creating extra revenue. Other services I have offered have also been meal planning services, coaching, website critiques, and I still offer this as I love it so much. Um, headline writing services, and recently I set up a writing agency and that worked very well at all. So they're all examples of services. So the cons of services are that you are trading your time for money, which means you can't scale up by doing more work for yourself as you only have so much time in the day. However, what you can do to scale up a service-based business and make it successful is to outsource the service to someone else. If you spend your time creating a sales funnel of new clients every month, you can pay someone else less than you have been paid to do the work. And this is what I did with the writing agency is I made this passive by hiring other people to take on the work and actually write for me. So I wasn't actually doing the writing. So number two, the first thing I did um, when I started my very first business after I did the um, website, um, the website, creating websites for other people was I put ads on my blog. So I started to build up the traffic on my blog by working for free by writing helpful blog articles and sharing them everywhere that I could. And very quickly, my traffic built up to around about 30,000 page views for, per month. And at this point, I decided to put other people's banner ads on my blog, and I made about $30 in my first month, which was actually really exciting for me. If you've never earned any money online and suddenly you make $30 a month and it's all passive, then that is so exciting. And then after that, my traffic continued to rise really quickly and I moved from Google AdSense to media.net. And at the height of my traffic, I was making over $7,000 a month from other people's banner ads on my website. And this was actually my highest revenue source at that time. But this income from ads didn't last, unfortunately. After that, I moved to Ad Thrive, and for Ad Thrive, you have to have at least, I think it's 100,000 page views per month to be able to qualify for Ad Thrive. But uh, uh, so for a while, I had a combination of media.net and Ad Thrive ads on my website, as Ad Thrive couldn't compete with the RPMs that media.net would give me. Um, RPMs is just a way of measuring how much money you're getting per thousand page views on your website. Um, so you can compare like how much money you're making per day. But then uh, the media.net dropped down and then I replaced all my ads with Ad Thrive. Um, and then my ad revenue dropped to around one to $2,000 per month. Recently, I've moved to Mediavine to see if I could get my RPM higher and I did manage to get my RPM higher. So the pros of putting banner ads on your website is that this income source is completely passive, which is fantastic as you set it once, which is easy, especially if you're with a bigger network and you totally forget 
forget it. You set it and forget it and the money just rolls into your bank account. So what's not to love? A few things actually. So here are the cons. Ads can make your website look a bit cheap and spammy. The bigger networks aren't too bad as they have good quality controls over their ads. But with Google AdSense, you can find yourself with some really ads, uh, random ads appearing all over your website. And a big con for putting ads on your website is ads can actually slow down your website quite a lot and they're really annoying to readers leading to a poorer user experience. Uh, ads can be really distracting to your viewers if you're trying to sell your own products or um, give, give away something free to get people onto your email list so your conversion rates can be a lot lower if you've got banner ads on your website. I remember with media.net and um, they encourage you to put on an automatic video that loads as soon as your web page loads and when I tried it on my phone I realized that my web my website one of my websites wasn't actually loading at all and um, it was just so slow it was just actually crashing so I took that off because that was a really poor user experience so some things work for well for some people and they don't work well for other people. So here are some of the most popular advertising networks that you can join. So here are the most popular networks with my favorites at the top. So number one, Mediavine. Number two, AdThrive. Number three, Monumetric. Number four, Media.net. Number five, Google AdSense. And number six, Ezoic. Ezoic is a good one to get started with if you are not getting much traffic. It's much better than Google AdSense because you'll probably get paid a lot more money. Number three, my third type of uh, revenue stream was affiliate marketing. So this is another lovely passive income source, which is perfect for those who have a lot of traffic. Affiliate marketing is simply recommending other products on your blog and getting paid a commission from that company. So being a food blogger, I mainly used Amazon Associates to link to food related products on Amazon from my blog post. I also tried several products in ClickBank, but none of them did that well except for Organifi, which is like a green juice powder, which did so well for me and customers were very happy with the products and continued to order. So I continued to get a residual income every month, which was pretty amazing. I also happen to love the product myself, which is essential when you're recommending other people's products. So the pros of this income stream is it's completely passive. It's also very easy to simply drop links in your blog post to products that you use and love. And you don't get any of the hassle of having to do market research, set up sales funnels, create and test new products, market products, test the financials and risk losing money and having to deal with customer services. You just get an automatic transfer of money into your bank account each month. It is so easy. But the cons of having to do affiliate marketing is you have to have a lot of traffic to realistically make good money from affiliate marketing. I wouldn't even expect to earn any money from affiliate marketing before I had at least 10,000 visits to my blog every month. And even with that amount of traffic, your affiliate income will be very, very small. If you get over 100,000 page views to your blog each month, you should be able to make at least 1,000 to 2,000 from affiliate marketing each month. This is what I earned from affiliate marketing for many, many years without having to do anything new. Although um, I remember that I did earn many, many thousands from Amazon each month at the height of my um, blog traffic. But Amazon is not paying people as much anymore. So it's better to avoid Amazon for affiliate income and find niche affiliates instead because it looks like Amazon is going downhill and probably won't be allowed uh, uh, around for much longer for affiliates. And also you don't get to control anything. You don't get to change the product to your liking. Um, the affiliate program might actually change its terms so it's not favorable anymore. Um, and it might reduce the amount of income that you make like Amazon and then your, your um, earnings plummet and you've got all these links to the product all over your website and you can't actually make any income anymore and you forget where you've dropped all these links which is why Amazon are going to continue to do well they're going to get away with not paying people and people are still going to have links to Amazon all over their blogs and another problem with um, smaller affiliates is that they often change the service that they provide 
um, which changes the platform so your links become invalid. So that is a big problem with the smaller ones. And you end up like signing up for so many different ones that you forget to check them. You, you don't check that your links are still up and working. And it turns out most of the time they are not. So here are all the most popular affiliate marketing programs that you could join. Amazon Associates, ClickBank, Share a Sale, eBay, Etsy, and Big Commerce. Another great passive income stream is number four, to write an ebook. This was the next revenue stream I implemented on my blog and it generated a lot of money for me. What I did was I looked at my most popular blog posts and read the questions that people kept asking me over and over and I created a product to solve these problems. People only ever wanted to know how they could lose over 50 pounds in a few months like I did. So that's exactly what I help people to do. I created an ebook that was a seven day detox using the same recipes that I'd used to lose the weight. And my ebook made me thousands in the first month and it continued to sell well for me for many, many years. I've updated it several times to give it a more modern feel and people are still getting fantastic results from it. And after the su success of this first ebook, I repeated this pro process and created many more ebooks, including several recipe books and even a homemade beauty products book and many, many more. None of my subsequent ebooks have ever sold as well as the first ebook I created, but they did help me to fill my store with products so I can offer sales on my various products all year long. And after you've created a few ebooks, you can bundle these together by creating a bundle of ebooks. And people often love these as they get a massive discount that they pay and they pay uh, less than they would for just, they pay more for that they would for just one book, but they get a massive discount on the price of all the books. So the pros, creating a product once and continuing to make so much money from it is a really good feeling and a very good use of your time. It feels amazing to be the author of a book that is helping so many people change their lives for the better. I estimate that I've made well over $160,000 from this one book, which took me about a month to create. And you can't beat this in terms of return on your time investment. This is a really good passive income source that can free up your time to work on other projects and income sources. And ebooks are very easy to create and don't cost you any money at all. You don't have to spend any special kind of, you don't have to have any special kind of expertise to write an ebook. But the cons are that no income source is ever truly passive and this is no exception. With the introduction of an ebook into your business, you now have customer services issues to deal with. Customers won't receive your email delivering the book. They'll have problems with the payment source. They might want a refund. And all of this requires more work answering the emails. I personally pay an assistant to handle customer services for me, which frees up my time to do other things. But I do have to pay for this, of course. But if you're making the same kind of money that I've been making from my ebook, this small expense is a drop in the ocean. And if you struggle with writing, you'll find it hard to create an ebook, but you could actually outsource it. Also, if you have a good idea for an ebook, something will actually sell or you'll waste your time creating something that nobody wants. This has happened to me and it's no fun when you create something that nobody actually buys. So here are some ideas for popular ebooks. You could create an ebook around weight loss, personal development, recipes, beauty, making more money, creating successful businesses, relationship help, or parenting. Number five, you could, another income stream is to self-publish a book on Amazon. So the next thing I did was I took my, um, my eBooks and I turned them into Kindle books and I put them on Amazon. This hasn't been a massive earner for me because I didn't really push Amazon too hard. Um, I really wanted to just focus on selling the ebooks on my website as I could sell them for a higher amount of money because I gave people bonuses and they were PDFs with all kinds of added extras. Um, so I, yeah, I preferred people to buy from my website because I got to keep all the money and you don't get to keep all the money on Amazon. So the pros is this can be a very passive income stream once it gets going. So it has to actually get the traction it needs for Amazon to keep recommending it. Um, so you might have to do a lot of self promotion and lead a lot of traffic yourself to Amazon to really get the ball rolling on Amazon. 
and it's once it does it does this it can be a really good way to get your name out there by helping people find you on Amazon and um, your book can actually direct people back to your blog as long as you have freebie offers scattered in your book that people can sign up for. The cons are that you have to be good at marketing your book on Amazon. Amazon isn't just going to start showing your book on the first page without proof of sales and reviews first. So Amazon can take a commission and have rules about the price that you charge and they don't allow you to access your own customer list. These are Amazon's customers, not your customers. So that's a massive con when it comes to selling your products on Amazon. Number six income stream is to create a membership site. Creating a membership site is a great way to earn recurring income every month, month after month. And although my ebook sales were good, I realized that if I offered ongoing meal plans, monthly meal plans in the form of a membership, I would get paid every single month, not just as the one-off sale for one ebook. So I created my signature weight loss program called the leaf system as it sneaks a lot of leafy greens into delicious food so you can't taste the greens i got a group of testers to go through my program and they got amazing results so i started offering it on my site in the form of monthly memberships and lifetime offers and it worked really well and continues to do do very well for me to this very day so the pros the pros of this is that you can make money every single month not just once and it's such a great feeling to build up a community of people and support them to change their lives while they support each other. And it's a very good upsell to a cheaper product that can help take your income to the next level. But the cons of a membership are it's a lot more work than creating a standalone product as you have to continue to work on your membership every single month. So existing membership members are always getting more value for money than they continue to pay. And it can be really hard to walk away from it if you change your mind. People can be more hesitant to join a recurring monthly income uh, subscription than pay for a one-time product, which is why I offer both of these ways to pay for my weight loss program. The seventh income stream is network marketing. So this wasn't actually something that I planned to get involved with, but I just happened to fall into it. And um, I didn't actually really know what network but what network marketing really was until I discovered the company that I ended up joining. A lot of my blogger friends got started with an essential oils company called Young Living at the same time. So overnight literally everyone I knew was raving on about how good essential oils were for your health. And at that very time I was actually pretty sick with a long-term illness and I wasn't really feeling up to starting a new business. But after mentioning my health product problems to a friend, she recommended that I try essential oils. So I did, um, as I was willing to try anything to recover, and I was so shocked, it actually made a massive difference to my health. And I started detoxing, and then I felt a million times better. So I ended up joining the network marketing company and had fantastic results, and I was now well enough to focus on work again. So naturally, I wanted to share my experiences on my blog and with my email list. And people were joining my team in their droves and pretty soon I had a thriving network marketing business which was actually really fun. After six months of starting I'd made enough sales that I won a place on a cruise for me and my husband as a reward and some other pretty awesome gifts which was fantastic and I was also making a really good income as well. I dedicated about two years to make that business a success before I decided that I actually prefer preferred blogging type work. I learned so much about personal development during that time and how to motivate a team of people and I enjoyed it while I did it but I just burned out of always just having chats with team members all the time. I'm a very creative person who likes to get stuff done, not sit around having virtual chats all day long, chivying people along all day long. So I d dedicated my work back to my blog again. And I made a couple of thousand dollars each month for a good while. And now that I'm not active in the business anymore, I still make around $500 a month and sometimes a lot more than this for not um, actively doing any new work on the business, which is just fantastic. My passive income has lasted for around four years now without me doing any work on the business at all, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. So the pros, if you love to network with people, this is the perfect business for you. 
It's possible to do this online as I did, but you need a big audience to make it work well. Your income can be passive for a really long time and it's possible to make very good money with network marketing. But like everything else, you have to have the right attitude to it. I don't think I had the right personality for it, but I really still really enjoyed it at the time and I'm grateful for the income. Most of my friends did very, very well with the business and several of them ended up at the level where they were making millions in residual income. They have done fantastically well, so congratulations to them. The cons of this is it can be draining for introverts and you can alienate a lot of your friends in real life if you can't bring yourself to stop talking about your network marketing business. I made that mistake myself and I learned my lesson. It requires a lot of hard work to start with and you have to invest some money in the products every month so that you can legitimately promote something you love. Number eight, you can create a course. This is a fantastic uh, revenue stream. This is my most fun product to create. I really love to consume and create courses and I think most people love to watch videos on courses these days. I have only created a couple of small courses as my niche didn't really lend itself to a course but um, I'm actually creating a lot more courses for my current business, Kath Kyle, and I've created a few so far and I, continue, I am continuing to create one to two new courses every single month and I'm absolutely loving it. So the pros of this is that you can actually make a lot of money through courses because people are willing to pay a lot more money than an ebook. They can actually take less time than an ebook to create especially if you prefer talking more than you like writing. They can be a great way to help people understand your material and they're also extremely passive if you just create it once and you might need to make up a few updates to it in the future. But the cons of a course is you have to think about the tech you're going to use for your course. This can get expensive so, so you want to make sure that you're definitely going to make money from it. You will need a good microphone and a way to record your voice. You may also need to create slides for your presentations and do screen shares if needed. And the um, just letting you know that the course software that I use is Thinkific. And you can see that in the link below if you are interested in creating courses. So must have resources for online course creation. I have experimented with a lot of course equipment, so I'll share what I've loved the most and why. This is the microphone that I am using and it is a Yeti microphone. It makes everything crisp and it blocks out background noises. I use Google Slides, which are free for my presentations. I love to use Screencast-O-Matic to record my presentations as videos because you have the option of making a video for yourself in the corner like I'm doing right this very moment using Screencast-O-Matic and it's easy to edit and it's also very, very cheap. I also use ClickFunnels for my weight loss membership because it's a great place to store information if you don't have a course and ClickFunnels creates some great sales pages and funnels and some really good ways of upselling your products and making more money from them and um, that's what I use for my smoothie website and I use Thinkific for my course creation because you can actually get started started completely free. I think you can create, at the time of this recording, you can create three products completely free before you have to stay, start making, uh, start paying any money whatsoever. So that is fantastic. I love Thinkific. It's pretty similar, similar to Teachable, but um, Teachable didn't have quite as good package for getting started for free. So that's why I went for Thinkific. Number nine source of revenue stream is offer coaching. I got a lot of experience coaching as part of my network marketing business and I did a fair amount of business coaching as I really do adore helping people and I often enjoy coaching people for free at mastermind meetups. But I decided that I didn't want to offer this as an ongoing service, mainly because even though I actually love coaching people, I don't like having appointments. If I wake up and know my day is dotted with appointments, I feel stressed and I feel like I've got a job. Whereas if I'm working on other people's schedule, I don't want to let them down. I actually prefer to have the whole day to create stuff and this is my favourite way to spend my time as I really enjoy the freedom that it gives me. And what I do right now is I do um, online group coaching and that means that I help people in a group and I reply to people on my time scales on a daily basis. I just jump into my membership 
and I help people, I record videos for them and I um, reply to their messages and help to coach them that way. And that is what I give to all of my, um, any of my customers for any of my products for my entrepreneurial business, kathkyle.com. So the pros of this is you can charge a lot of money for coaching, but this is still tr uh, trading time for income. So I prefer more passive types of income, especially when you've been in business for a while. And if you're someone who likes to listen, talk and really help people, this is a great fit for your personality. So if you want to make it completely passive, group coaching is absolutely the way to go. Although it's not completely passive, but it is, um, you, you do coach on your time scale and you don't have to worry about trading time for money. You can have as many people as you want um, in your group coaching program and you can actually pay other people to help you manage it if it gets too big. So it can be very, very passive for you. And the cons of coaching is it can take a lot of work to get people to pay for coaching more than you might think. And I don't find this fun personally, but you might. Um, and it's not fun to, um, it's not passive to always have to be looking for new clients all the time, unless you've got an automatic funnel set up. So number 10 revenue source is design t-shirts and apparel with print on demand. What I did was I set up a store in Shopify and I suddenly realized that there were all these print on demand apps that integrated with the store very easily. So I thought I'd try my hand at creating my own products and I produced some designs that I really love and I wear my own t-shirts proudly. But this is a business that never really worked for me. I guess other people didn't feel the same way and it only made a few sales. So the pros are that this can be a great passive income stream. If you get enough people to visit your store and they like your designs, you can also upload your designs to various other websites that I'll list below. So the cons are that people have to like your work and know it's there in the first place. You can't make money with, uh, you can't make much money with this as you have to pay a lot of money to get the item printed in the first place. So you don't get to keep all the profit. So it's quite a low sale amount for you. So it might not be worth your while putting your time into this unless you feel confident in your designs and in your ability to get people enough traffic to visit your store for people to buy them. So where to sell your designs? If you don't want to do this yourself on your own website, you can upload this onto other people's websites and you never know, one of them could completely take off and it could be a big earner for you. So you can put your designs on Etsy, Amazon Merch, Teespring, Spreadshop, Redbubble, Sell My Teas, Threadless, Bonfire, on your own store, Tee Public, Zazzle or Cafe Press. My 11th drop shipping, uh, my 11th revenue stream is drop shipping. After I set up a Shopify store, I got into drop shipping as a way to diversify my products even more. I sold a variety of health and fitness products, my own digital products, my t-shirts and other accessories. And this worked really well for a couple of years and I was making a really good income. And then all of a sudden my sales just died down and I decided that I'd rather focus on my own products rather than selling the exact same products as everyone else. So I had the most success with selling a free bundle with an upsell. So a free bundle was a free plus shipping. So I charged people for a bundle, which was like a digital product plus a physical product, a small physical product that didn't cost me much money to buy it and ship it. So I think it cost me like $1 to buy this product and ship it. It was a blender bottle and um, people got it free, but they had to pay shipping. So I charged uh, $9.99 for the bundle and for free shipping, and then ended up making around about $8 something profit. And this was very, very, very popular. This was one of my best selling products. It worked really, really well. And um, I had a lot of fun doing drop shipping but I've got no desire to do it again because I think it can, um, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So the pros of uh, drop shipping are the products that you drop ship are very cheap. So you can make a really good profit doing this, but the cons are 
it's hard to get people to buy products that they've seen cheaper somewhere else because it's the same product so everybody else is selling the same product as you and you can't brand or control the quality of the product which affects the quality of your brand so if people get this really cheap looking product in the post from china it kind of cheapens your brand you also have to figure out a way to get people to your store and if you end up paying for Facebook ads, you might struggle to break even or worse, lose a lot of money. Number 12 revenue source was creating wall art. Another fun project of mine that didn't end up being much of a success yet was um, creating wall art. So I thought my products looked really good, but people didn't seem to buy very many of them. Um, when I create a product, if it flops, I generally move on quickly unless I've put a lot of time into it. But if it's something time consuming, I do a lot of testing first. So this was just a fun little project and it didn't take very long to create my bundle of wall art. Um, so my pros was it it was a fun project and you get to make a lot of money from your, you get to make money from your art and it's very passive. And the cons is that it can be hard to make a decent income by selling designs. So the 13th revenue source was to set up your own affiliate program. So once you have your own products, you can ask other people to sell them through an affiliate program. Then they give you a percentage of the sale. So, sorry, you give them a percentage of the sale when they sell your product on your behalf. So this is very lucrative for both parties if you are selling digital products because there are no further costs which have to be deducted. So you can offer 50% more of the price of the product as a commission. And I offer a very high percentage in my affiliate product in commission. And I don't get that many sellers for me, but once in a while I got a lot of traffic from someone who is promoting my product, which was nice. Um, and back in the day I did get a lot of people selling my products, so it did work very well at at one point in time for me. So the pros is this is a good passive source of income as you're not doing any extra work to get more eyeballs on your product. These are people you wouldn't have been able to reach and sales wouldn't have you wouldn't have gotten gotten these sales otherwise. But the cons of this is that this can take a lot of work to build relationships with affiliates or answer their questions and support them which is why I stopped doing it because I didn't really want to take the time to do that. So now that you've got everything you need to start creating your own passive income streams and work your way up to six figures you might be wondering what tools you need to set up an online business and I have a free gift for you that will give you all the tools that I have used to create a six figure blog and you can click on the link below to get that and that will give you links to all of the tools that I used and mentioned in this video and you can I'll also give you the link back to the blog post so you can go back to read it and click on any of the links within the blog post and you can also see more related content if you're interested in reading this and um, I just wanted to let you know about another free gift that I have if you are struggling to get customers at the moment um, I used to struggle to get customers and then I learned the real secret of getting enough clients in your business so customers can actually sense desperate energy so the best thing you can do to attract clients is to feel absolute certainty that the right customers will come to you and this can be easier said than done so what I've done is created something that will help you super fast this guided meditation will help you attract more clients and customers on a continuous basis to your business this I am guided audio track will energetically draw clients to you in just two minutes. So this is part of a paid, paid product, but I'm giving it away totally free for a limited time. So if you want that, then click on the link within the blog post and you can get that there. So if you love this video, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I help people a lot with their mindset and also practical ways of being successful in your business. I would love it if you would leave a comment just letting me know what income streams you have tried and what income streams you want to try in the future. And if you love this video, please like it and I will see you next time. Take care.